Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? Uh, any question before we get to business? <clears throat> any questions? Okay, so uh, last time uh, we were talking about rational expressions and uh, natural domain. <clears throat> and uh, can someone remind us briefly what uh, natural domain is? Yeah? Um, right. So for a given expression, it's the set of all x's, if, if the variable is x, such that uh, the expression is defined. So in our class, so far, there's exactly two ways in which something can be undefined. Uh, and that is uh, division by 0. So like, for example, the function 1 divided by x is defined for every x except x is 0. Uh, the other way in which an expression can, can be undefined uh, is if uh, it's an argument to an even radical. In such a case, what must be true about the argument to an even radical? Non-negative. Non Greater than or equal to 0. So like the natural domain of square root of x is x greater or equal to 0. And similarly, how about the natural domain of cube root of x? All reals, right? All reals. Uh, and if you're ever not sure, you can just sort of, you know, try and think about it. Uh, think about some number that has a square, say, say like 16. Does some number square to 16? Yeah, four squares to 16. Does a num is there a number that squares to become negative 16? No, 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 no. So that means that you can't put negatives in into the square root. How about, is there a number that cubes to negative 8? Yeah, negative 2 will do that. Because negative 2 times negative 2, that'll be positive 4. And then multiplied by the last negative 2, that's negative 8. OK, so that's sort of what we were doing last time. And I think we might have just briefly started to talk about this last time, so I'm going to write it down. Uh, intervals. So did we talk about that? Did that come up? I can't remember. It did not? OK. Intervals. Uh, so I'm going to write in three columns, one, two, three. Uh, the leftmost column will be called algebraic notation. The middle column, interval notation. No te shien. And the right column, plot. Okay. So first example, a less than x less than b. So an example would be something like 3 less than x less than 8. <clears throat> so I could ask some questions. Uh, is it the case that we could do, say, x equal to uh, pi? Would, th would it be true for this? Yeah, right? Because, in, in a sense, you're asking, is pi between 3 and 8? Well, it is. So the answer is yes. OK, how about, uh, what's something else that's in there? Besides pi. How about uh, 7 point, uh, I don't know, 9. Uh, five. Is that in there? Yes. How about uh, three? Is three in there? Does three satisfy that? No, right? No, because 
uh, you're asking, is it the case that 3 is less than 3? No, it is not the case. Okay, so to write this in interval notation, you write with the A's and B's, you write it like this. And with the 3's and 8's, you write it like this, 3 to H. So what I'm saying is that these, these two things are equivalent things. Uh, finally, to draw it as a plot, you do open circle at A, open circle at B. By, I mean unfilled in circle at A. Unfilled in circle at 3. Unfilled in circle at 8. Okay, any question about this? So, by this table that we're constructing, I mean that this is a statement in algebraic notation. It is equivalent to this statement in interval notation, and it is equivalent to this statement as a plot. They're equivalent. Two, it could be the case that we might say, you know what, I'd really actually like to have that eight. Eight is not in there but I want it so we could write it like this so a less than x and now less or equal b so 3 less than x less or equal 8 and again I'm just doing this uh, this is this is sort of in the abstract and this is a specific example so how could we write this in interval notation because notice that that less or equal right there <coughs> is different uh, than that strictly less than. So the interval notation has to look different also. So what do we need to write? Yeah, it'll be 3 to 8, and now it'll be a bracket. So the name of that thing, symbol, is bracket. But uh, I usually just call it a square parenthesis because it's kind of easier to, it's more clear at any rate. Uh, fine. So then, uh, well, I guess I need to write the A's and B's thing. A. And then the way that you signify this in a plot is by filling in the point that is included. <clears throat> okay, then as a matter of language, uh, as a matter of language, you refer to uh, these as open. So when, when the point, when the circle is not filled in and the point is not included, that's called open. And then when the point is included and it is filled in, that's called closed. Okay, well, instead of including 8 but not 3, we could do it the other way around. So I'll just do that very quickly because it's exactly what you expect. So a less or equal x less than 8 and 3 less or equal x. Uh, well, that's supposed to be a b. b. 8. So uh, a to b. 3 to 8, A to B, 3 to 8. What's the last one in this sequence? Both, Both included. So A less or equal X less or equal B and 3 less or equal x less or equal 8. So 
square brackets for A and for B, for 3 and for 8, and filled in circles for, three, for A and for B, and for 3 and for 8. Any question about uh, these? OK. So besides those four, there's uh, others. So how about in algebraic notation, I write, uh, so now that I think you understand the abstract thing, I'm, I'll just continue with concrete examples. Uh, how about x uh, greater than or equal to 3? So all the previous examples had x in between two things. Like, for example, there's x in between 3 and 8. Uh, but this one doesn't have x in between two things. At least it's not, ex it's not explicit uh, yet. So how could we write this in interval notation? Okay. Right. Okay, so then it's going to look like this, one of, so, so, something like this, one of these. Uh, and the question, well, the question is, is the left one is always the, the least. So, right. So concerning this 3, is 3 going to be the greatest or the least? The least, right? Because we're saying we want x's greater than or equal to 3. So 3 is going to be the least. And it's going to be included because it says less or equal. And then, to signify that we're going all the way to the right, and now this is infinite. OK, so now, to sort of help you see uh, the connection, uh, we could write the x's and the 3's on other sides so that we could write the 3 here and the x here. But in exchange for changing the sides of 3 and x, what happens? Yeah, the direction of the inequality changes. And then now uh, we want to write x in between two things. And we could write it like this, 3 less or equal x less than infinity which is why this one looks like that. Any question about this? Finally, uh, to make a plot, uh, instead, of a, instead of a circle uh, open or closed, uh, you just draw an arrow. It says it keeps on going. And then, uh, you know, if you want it, this is, this is in a sense saying go all the way to the right. If you mean to go all the way to the left, then what do you use? Negative infinity, right? And then what's, what's all the reals? Right. A synonym for the reals is negative infinity to infinity. Uh, notice that infinity, I haven't written square brackets. Okay. They're, they're open. So second note is that uh, plus and minus infinity are not in the reals. So they're not real numbers. <coughs> They are symbols which are uh, less than and then or greater than. every uh, 
every real number. Okay, and note. <laughs> Intervals are subsets of the reals. And because of these notes and these considerations, therefore, a statement like three to infinity with square brackets on three and also on infinity are nonsense. Why? Sorry? Infinity is not a real. Exactly. This statement, if it's going to mean anything, means the, the subset of the reals from 3 to infinity, including 3, including infinity. But that's nonsense, because infinity is not a real number. So, so you can write it like this. That's fine. Not including infinity. This is not fine. This is not OK. So this is not okay in the same sense that if you, if you were to go to the grocery store for apples, then you'd have, to, you'd have to purchase a subset of their apples, right? You could purchase zero apples, one apple, all of their apples, some, some, some subset, right? And suppose that you come back with a bag of apples and then you inspect it closely and find inside of it a potato. That is not right, <laughs> and it will never be right to have a potato in a bag of apples. So it's the same kind of uh, thing here. Infinity does not belong. Any questions about this? Yes? If you're used to doing a polar number line, are we allowed to do that as long as we have an appropriate open circle or closed circle? I guess I take that to mean a longer one? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Other questions? Okay. So, uh, now we need to remind ourselves of some terminology about sets. So the state of Texas assures me that you are familiar with the phrases and terms, uh, subset, intersection, union, symmetric difference, <laughs> and a variety of other things. Uh, but the state of Texas has known to be mistaken from time to time. So we're going to just briefly cover that for a second. <clears throat> so we'll go over union. So the union of two sets is the set which contains elements from the first set or the second set and then I'll add or both so uh, in a math class the word or always means or or both so it could be the first thing or the second thing or both uh, but I'll I add that because um, 
well, on the street, sometimes or means this kind of thing or that kind of thing, but not both, right? You can have an ice cream or you can have some cake, but you cannot have both. <laughs> and, my, and my kids are, are, are up on that. If, so, if someone asks, do you want cake or do you want ice cream? They'll say, yes. <laughs> okay, fine. So then, uh, the way uh, what this is, is that it, as a Venn diagram, A, if that's set A, and this is set B, so that is to say the circle on the left represents set A and the circle on the right represents set B, uh, then the union is denoted by A and then this upward cup symbol that looks like a U which is nice because the word is union. So A union B is, well, it would be a shape that kind of looks like this. All of that. Okay. <clears throat> so for example, uh, we could say that, well, set A is the set that contains one, three, uh, two, smiley face, uh, seven, and exclamation point. I just put these things in there just so you don't have the mistaken impression that sets can only contain numbers. And I put these out of order even though it pains me. Uh, so that you know that it doesn't matter what order they're in. <clears throat> okay, so if that's, if that's set A, and set B is, uh, how about uh, three, seven, smiley face, uh, and indeterminate face. If that's the case, uh, then please compute the union, A union B. <clears throat> okay. So the way to do this is well, more or less, you just write down all the, all the things that are in either one. So one is in set A. Is it in the union? Yes. yes, because it's in set A. You just got to be in one or the other or in both. And because one is in A, it's in the union. Uh, how about two? Yes. How about three? Yes. Okay, now wait a second. Three is in both of them. Three is in A and also in B. So do we need to write more, more than one copy of three? No, right, because sets uh, contain at most one copy of anything. So for sets, you always write just one copy. Okay, uh, seven, yes, uh, exclamation point is in there, and then, uh, well, these are in the correct ASCII order, but as for these, these, I don't even know, these, which one of them comes first, I don't even know, doesn't, I don't know. Is it to put them in the order? No, it's not necessary, that's just what I do. Good. Any question about uh, this? The orderedness of the set of the elements in the sets is not uh, significant. You could write you could write them in any, in any order that you like. What is the counterpart to union? Intersection. Intersection. <laughs> <clears throat> so.
So the intersection of two sets is the set which contains elements uh, which are in <laughs> the first set and the second set. So I wrote the I wrote the the key word in both of them in red. So for union the key word is or and for intersection the key word is and. So that means that it has to be in the first one and also the second one. So a uh, typical example uh, well, when you're driving and two roads are meeting, what's that little region where it's this where you're on both roads at the same time? Intersection. The intersection, right? Because that little patch, that little rectangular patch, is part of both roads. So it's the intersection. Okay. Uh, for a Venn diagram, again, if this is set A. <coughs> and this one is set B, then intersection is denoted with a symbol that looks just like union except upside down. So A intersect B. And uh, what will it be for this drawing? It's that little sliver thing there. Looks like this. Okay, so for the same A and B above, uh, please compute A intersect B. So the way you do it is you just choose either set, uh, then you start going down the line and comparing. So I see that one is in A. Is it uh, in the intersection? No, because it is not also in B. So one's not in the intersection. Okay, how about three? Yes, three is in the intersection. Okay, good, how about two? No, smiley face? Yes. Uh, seven? Yes. yes. Exclamation point? No. So now, do we need to run down the line with B? No, we don't. Uh, because, well, anything you didn't check in A is not, in, is not in the intersection, right? So you only need to run down the line with one of them. So that's the intersection. Any question about that? Okay. Now, uh, the operations union and intersection are operations on sets. And uh, just, like, um, just like when we talked about addition and multiplication, uh, well, zero is special with regard to addition because why? Is the additive identity. Adding zero is the same as doing nothing. So zero is important with regard to addition. Uh, what's important with regard to multiplication? One. 
is the multiplicative identity because multiplying by one is the same as doing nothing. And just like zero and one are important, special, with regard to addition and multiplication, there is something that is uh, important with regard to union that we want we want something that unioning with this is the same as doing nothing. So what's the name of the this? So it's got a name, just like zero and one. Anybody know its name? That's okay. Empty set. <clears throat> the empty set is the set which contains nothing it is uh, the union identity which is to say uh, that A union, the empty set, which is denoted with a circle and a slash through it, is what? Is A. Uh, it is denoted with circle through slash, with slash through it. Okay, interesting. So the empty set is, uh, it's important in the same way that zero and one are important. And in, in a math class, it's always important to verify whether, if you're talking about a set of things, you need to verify whether or not this set of things is empty. Uh, because here's a, here's a nice statement. Uh, are you aware that, uh, UTD is undefeated in football. Undefeated. We have won every national championship game that we have ever participated in. Are those true statements? They are. Uh, because the set of all games that we've ever played in is empty. So if you were to say, no, we're not undefeated, that surely can't be right. Then I would say, oh, please point to me the game that we lost. And your inability to do that means that the statement that we're undefeated is true. Lovely, isn't it? <laughs> Good. Uh, fine. So now that we're comfortable with, hopefully, comfortable-ish, with union intersection in the empty set, uh, now we're going to do that work, but we're going to do it with intervals. Okay, so first exercise is simplify. Simplify um, three uh, to nine, open at nine, union. Uh, how about, um, I don't know, five? to uh, 73. Simplify this. Okay. And as part of the discussion, not part of the uh, answer to the exercise, I'll remark that uh, the union of two intervals can be simplified uh, exactly when they overlap.
more or less. <laughs> I'll just leave that there. Uh, so the way we're going to go about solving this is we're going to draw two number lines. And we're going on the first number line, we're going to plot the first interval. And on the second number line, we're going to plot the second interval. Okay. So there's four numbers that we need to deal with. 3, 9, 5, and 73. Their absolute position is not important. The only thing that matters uh, is their relative position. We have to get them in the correct left to right order. So of the four numbers, 3, 9, 5, and 37, which one is furthest left? 3. Uh, so I'm going to do that one. And I'm going to plot it on this one, because that's the one corresponding to that one. And I'm going to plot it there. And I'm going to plot it with a closed uh, circle. Why? Why closed? Because 3 is included. OK, good. So now we can strike 3 off the out of the possibilities for a moment. And of the remaining numbers, uh, which one is the least? 5. So I'll plot it down here. And I'm going to plot it open because it's not included. We can strike 5 from the list and then, and then ask of the remaining numbers which one is least. 9 is least. I'll plot it open because it's not included. Uh, so now that we have the two red numbers, we're talking about all of this. That's what the first one means. I just draw it squiggly because otherwise the red doesn't show up very good. Uh, and then finally, of the remaining numbers, which one is the least? <laughs> 73, right? Plot it open. So 5 to 73 is everything in here. OK. Any question about plotting the intervals? Now, the way that you can compute the union is by remembering that union means or. It's, it's everything that is in the first set or in the second set or in both. Uh, and switching to colors now, we could say, well, we want all of the points that are red or green, or both. So how about uh, this point right here? So that's like maybe something like uh, 2. So is, is 2 a red point? It is not. Is it a green point? It is not. So. That's not one of the points we're looking for. So we want to find the, all the points that are red or green or both. So you start, uh, you know, I use an actual line, but you can just imagine it. Right? Start sweeping to the right. So do, 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 do. Oh, we found one, right? So three. Three must be in the intersection. Because we want all the points that are red or green or both. Union, thank you. Union. Uh, we want uh, we want the union, so it needs to be red or green or both. Okay. So then now, uh, still sweeping to the right. Uh, do 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 do. Okay. So here's here's five. Is five in the union? Yeah, because it's red. Is it green? Now five's not green, but being red is enough. Okay, so then do 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 do. Okay, nine is nine in the union. Yeah. So how far does the union go? To seventy-three. Okay. An alternative way to think about it. Um, 
besides sweeping a line left to right, uh, as you can imagine that you've got a you've got a flashlight up here, and this would be the shadow that both of them together cast. If you like thinking in that way. Uh, so then, how do we write this in interval notation? Uh huh. 73. Okay, and then how do we write this in algebraic notation? So that'd be three. Yeah, three. Very good. Okay, how about, how about this one? Please simplify. Um, 3 to 10, union, uh, 27 to 42. How do you respond to such a request? <coughs> has to be in either one. So what I want you to see is that, no, look at this expression, this one, and compare it to that one. Can we agree that this one down here is simpler than this one? Yeah. And the question is, is can you write this one simpler? And the answer is no, you cannot. So have a look at the language here. Union of two intervals can be simplified exactly when they overlap. Which means only if. So do they overlap? Well, let's have a look. And I'm doing this quick because we're up against the clock. So 3, 10, Twenty-seven, forty-two. So do they overlap? They do not. Alternatively, you could ask, if we were casting a shadow, could, there'd be a gap, right? It, it wouldn't be one big shadow. It'd be two pieces. Okay, so then the correct answer is that this is already simple. And then you could, so that means that the interval notation can't be simplified. To, to write it in algebraic notation, the simplest way to write it in algebraic notation is 3, less or equal x, less or equal 10, and then just the word or, 27 less or equal x less than 42. And then as a plot, that it would be this. So 3 to 10. Little gap. And then 27 to 42. Good. Any question about it? Okay, so please put away your things. It's time for a quiz.